book nerds welcome to the book nerds podcast uh, it's an exciting weekend uh, we have a very different book we have been you know uh, of course discussing uh, uh, fiction non fiction all sorts of books which are, some of them the non fiction have been kind of you know life transforming but let me tell you we are in for a treat because uh, we have got this book by uh, jitender choksi it's called loose fat get fitter and uh, yeah what an amazing book cover and you are looking super ripped uh, congratulations for this entire journey uh, uh, of course your followers and everybody in the entrepreneurial community across uh, the globe know you as jc so may i call you jc for today please uh, first <laughs> of all thank you. thank you for having me here and it's a, it's a real pleasure so sure uh, okay let's talk about uh, jc for a bit because you know uh, of course there is this amazing vibrant community of fitness enthusiasts who have been kind of transformed and i have been following the fit the instagram and you know the app etc it's just amazing uh, especially for people who have been you know kind of unfit for a while it is just brilliant uh, so i would like to tell everybody a little bit about jc before we dive right into the podcast and you know discuss fitness with him and the book uh, of course jc is the winner of the business world young entrepreneur award 2020 and he's a first generation fitness entrepreneur which is just brilliant you know there there are so many entrepreneurs around who are like second generation and third generation but this you know origin story of a first generation uh, person making it it just is just uh, awesome and of course uh, he started this community you know when he was just help, helping uh, his friends out on whatsapp and it's it's just brilliant you know how you but it's another thing you know kind of you know transforming that into a business model and kind of taking the passion you know uh, further uh, of course this community is in 104 countries now helping o- over 2 million people across the globe and uh, he has democratized uh, he, you know the way he has democratized uh, fitness it's just amazing uh, he had he has a history he in his childhood of course you were obese and you were struggling with a lot of stuff and that makes it even more special so i can keep on rambling about uh, jc he lives in pune uh, right now with his wife and daughter jc first of all you know this origin story of you know you being obese most of your i mean at least childhood and i was watching your instagram or something and you had posted a sort of uh, a picture with your wife also and then you know cut to right now you have posted a transformation uh, as well it's amazing it's it's just mind boggling thank you thank you so much uh, you know and uh, what can i say i think uh, it was meant to be um, sometimes i think if you're uh, you're open minded and if you're willing to uh, willing to look you know life can really show you around things and it's the same thing which has happened with me life has really shown me around um, some of the possibilities and uh, now i'm trying to show the same possibilities to everybody out there it's amazing yeah, yeah. it's it- i mean you have addressed so many taboos and myths in the book it's like you know i was like why didn't we know this earlier i mean because you know uh from sort of you know you are very worried about uh, many fitness influencers who look good all the time of course they give advice that is not actually perhaps based on research or is very close to science but you also say that science is not sexy so uh, tell us a little bit about that uh, part where you kind of you know mention all that well look there's there's no harm in looking good i think uh, there's there's two aspects to it right and first is the visual appeal and then the uh, content like we say don't judge a book by its cover it's it's a good thing to say but most of the people don't really apply that right the minute you look at the cover of the book you you kind of get curious so it's more important to understand that no matter how much you want to actually ignore the cover it does yeah. uh it it does have an appeal right um so i'm not opposed to you know people not looking great i'm 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 thinking all fitness influencers and coaches and people like us we should look great so that you know we asp- we help people um aspire to become more fit right that's the first part the second part is um most of the influencers use yeah. anecdotes uh instead of research now yeah understanding research i'm not saying the outcome of the research is um extremely complex it's really really simple but understanding the research 
uh, deciphering the entire message and not just taking uh, an article or audi- uh, editor's word for it as as what's needed. Right? So for that, you have to develop uh, critical thinking. You have to have a rational and logical mindset, and you have to be open to argumentation. You have to be open to um, um, basically. Uh, you have to be open to confrontation also, right? So yes. if otherwise, it's just you're building mass following, and yeah. you're just taking everybody for a ride, you know. So it's like you listen to me. If you don't listen to me, you're um, yeah. you know you're wrong. That that shouldn't be the mindset. And yeah. uh, with Twitter, we are trying to develop that critical thinking mindset in everybody's mind, so that people don't get duped by you know so-called influencers. Yeah, I mean, I've been. I mean, it's odd, but I have been kind of uh, reading a lot of these, uh, you know, cooking and fitness and lifestyle books for a couple of years. You know, what happens is that there are too many voices, and you tend to get confused somehow. You know, because it's it's somebody's talking about like Krish Ashok's book, uh, Basala Lab is talking about you know science of cooking, and of course, but uh, there are other books like the Lifestyle Diet uh, by Roh- Dr. Rohini Patel. There's so many, you know, but. Yeah. One tends to, I mean, as a layman, one gets to kind of, you know, gets confused. Like, which voice should we kind of, you know, go after and follow, you know, uh, uh, you know, properly? It it gets really hard. And then there is social media. You know, it gets very tough, JC. <laughs> what should we do? No, I agree. And uh, there's no there's no easy solution to this, right? And there's no easy solution because at the end of the day. Everybody who is putting their theory or everybody who is putting their best foot forward, they are probably doing it thinking that they are right. Um, yeah. And so you 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 can't criticize people who are probably genuine in their efforts, but not yeah. really scientific in their approach, right? But right. what you can do is you can develop critical thinking in the minds of people. You know, give people power to question. If yeah. people can question, and if you have the right kind of answers. That's a much better way to convince people than just purely on your looks or anecdotal evidence, right? Yeah. Somebody comes to me and says, "JC, why is this working, or why is it, you know, the way you have explained it is?" I should have an answer to that. If I don't have an answer to that, then, you know, I'm I'm probably not in the right place. And yeah. that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to convey uh, throughout the entire Fedora community. That's exactly what we are trying to do. You know, yeah. so idea is that give people that choice you give people that um, ability to question certain things and when there's a dialogue going on which is respectful which yeah. is empowering um, yeah. you know everybody prospers yeah and uh, at me- in you know at various instances in the book you have mentioned that this is a marathon this is not going to happen overnight and you know we are in the age of sort of you know short or you know short form content I mean, yeah. it's TikTok and book talk and whatnot, you know. So it is it really tough to kind of, you know, convince people to do it in a long form, you know, because everybody wants quick results. And you have mentioned a very funny one also in the book. Uh, and uh, I was uh, reading it that some somebody asked you uh, that she was supposed to go to a marriage and within one and a half months, she should transform into this, you know, amazing looking person. Uh, so... I'm sure that it comes to you very often, but uh, what do you say to those people? Well, uh, you know, we we try to convince them. We try to tell them that you know nobody ever gets to where they want to if they focus on short-term things. Uh, yeah. Out of you know five out of ten people would probably understand. You know, the rest yeah. of them would probably go through some kind of quick gimmick marketing, learn, and then eventually come back. Right. So, yeah. but we stick to our guns. You know, we we don't compromise on uh, some of the things that we have to tell people, um, yeah. and that's that's also one of the main reason why our community is the way it is. You know, we we don't uh, kind of give people what they're looking for. We we give people what they really need. Um, right. You know, so there's there's no easy way to address this, and uh, if anything, because of this short form content, it's only going to get worse. Like we are trying to simplify things. We are trying yeah. to you know, uh, use comedy as a means to, or memes as a means to uh, educate people. But you see, education requires time. I mean, when you go to school, you have to go through those 20 years. And if somebody comes, hey, I can't spend 20 years in school. Why don't you finish everything in five? Can't really do that. Yeah, It's the same with uh, everything, not just fitness. It's the same with everything. You know, if you 
if you just read through the abstract of the book and skip or skim through the pages, uh, right. hoping that the track will be enough, it never yeah. works. Right? You, you guys are uh, yeah. into books big time. Yeah. So you understand that unless until you read the whole book, you can't really understand the yeah. entire story with just um, totally. abstract. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, the, I mean, of course, we are going to discuss uh, a lot of myths uh, a little bit later. But one of those myths which really bothers me also is, and you have addressed it in the book, that, you know, women, about weight training in general, and then about women, you know, they can't lift weights, they look manly. So would you like to uh, add more, you know, uh, why have you addressed this? Uh, is it really prevalent? I mean, I know that in tier two, at least tier two and tier three, it is highly prevalent. I wanted to ask you, why have you, you know, mentioned it in the book and how important is it? for this myth to be busted? It's really important. And because I come from a tier three city, I come from a very small town um, uh, myself, you know, Mandiri. Um, back okay. in the day. Where, uh, where is this? Where is this, JC? Uh, it's about 20 kilometers from Bhopal. Um, okay. okay. It's an MP, so very small okay. town. Uh-huh. Back when I started going to this gym, um, yeah. you'd be surprised that my parents didn't really approve of that uh, decision. They thought that gyms are for place who are hooligans and you know, yeah. boys who end up going uh, in the gym for fighting and stuff, right? So they didn't really have very high opinion about the gyms. I had yeah. to convince my dad. And you'd be surprised to know that there were no girls. Um, and I, even even today, it's very difficult to find girls in the gyms. If the gym is very good, if it's a goals gym or it's a high-end gym, then you'll find like the ratio very 50-50 or something. Otherwise, yeah. you have yeah. yeah, tier one, you're talking about 50 50. Otherwise, and even if like the gyms are really good, otherwise, it's more like you know, two, three odd girls in a crowd huh. of 50 odd guys. That's that's a typical scenario. And yeah, right. even those two, three odd girls, uh, you'd find them in the in the in the you know, lightweight section or the cardio section. Uh, huh. even the gym trainers would tell them, Mama, your weight training section may happen literally in front of me. You know, I would go to this gym and Bangalore, where most of the girls would be just on treadmill and elliptical, they would never come to the weight training section. And I was yeah. like, why is this so? You know, and because this myth um, has been prevalent for so long, I just uh, couldn't keep quiet about it. Uh, yeah. Weight training is one of the best ways to um, lose weight. Uh, weight training is one of the best ways to uh, stay healthy forever. It's one of the best yeah. ways to improve your bone density. It's yeah. incredibly uh, a good tool for staying young. For as long as you want to, you know, like as long as you are training, you you will uh, reap the benefits of uh, weight training, and it's yeah. far superior than any other training regimen out there. So, okay. and and it's it's not impartial. Like it's not that weight training affects men differentially compared to women. Yeah. It's not true. It affects men and women in in almost similar manner. So, if both can reap similar kind of benefits, why is it that one section of population? Um, you know, encouraged to lift weights while the other one is kind of discouraged to do that. So I had to address this. Yeah, I think we have a question. Uh, let's have it on the screen and then perhaps you sure. can take it. Yeah. Arushi is asking you that uh, a fit body, you need a fit mind. What is your take on it? It's a cliche, but I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Would you like That's to a good question. Um, I, I believe, you know, these are so think about your entire life. As a, as a, uh, if you if you have to lay down a foundation, right, uh, and then uh, you need four pillars if you want to kind of create first floor, second floor, and so on. So, so in your life also, you have these four founding pillars. One is your physical well-being, mental well-being, social well-being, and financial well-being. Any of these pillars are weak, the foundation will be weak. If you have two or more pillars going down, you can't create first floor. Right? Your fi- foundation is weak. So all are equally important. Now, if you say, what should I focus on first? I'm saying focus on all of these, but focus on the thing which is easy to achieve, which is physical fitness. You know, physical fitness requires the least amount of efforts compared to all the other things. Once you have achieved physical fitness, you know, like uh, somebody said uh, that you can't have a, uh, you can't have a healthy mind if your body is not healthy. And I'll give you one simple example. Think about a small pimple on your face. You know, the minute you get a pimple on your face, no matter what good is happening in the world, you're only worried about that small pimple. True. You know, that's the the importance of having a great physical condition. 
even if a pimple can bother you any kind of physical ailment will prevent yeah. you from thinking straight yeah so the first thing for you to think straight or think the best is to get all physical ailments out of the picture yeah. Yeah. if you don't have any physical ailments then you are completely focused about thinking right then you can focus on your mental well being if you focus yeah. on your physical and mental well being it will automatically result in your financial and social well being yeah so it's Yeah. Thank you so much I, for that. Another example, I tell people that physical and mental fitness is like night and day. Yeah. One can't exist without the other. True. It is so true. Also, yeah, uh, yeah I'm I mean, uh, of course, uh, uh I I started the uh, Book Nerds community like 5 6 years back and you know, uh what do you think a lot of entrepreneurs also, you know, on LinkedIn especially, uh of course, so many of them are struggling with fitness. you know they they can get the best investments and of course i would like to congratulate you yeah, that you are backed by sequoia capital and sunil shetty of course and uh, uh but a lot of entrepreneurs especially they struggle with this because they can't find the right balance have you seen a change uh, perhaps in your attitude towards you know kind of building the community being that you know uh, rock star founder you know that you need to be right now uh with this sort of with this journey yeah look i would say that you know physical fitness improves everything else that you are trying to do you know so if i wasn't so physically fit i probably wouldn't be so mentally fit and i would struggle i would struggle so i'm saying if you are physically fit you are doing yeah. comparatively lesser work or you are you are doing more smarter work than okay. hard work Yeah. and at the end of the day look investment funding running companies and everything is all cool what are yeah. we building for who are we building for what are we yeah. going to do with this all money you know what are we going to do with it at the yeah. end of the day if i'm 60 yeah. and i can't enjoy yeah. the labors of my hard work when i'm 60 yeah. and what's yeah. the point of all of it like what's the point point of all of it if i can't enjoy it? so i'm yeah. i'm saying not just to uh, you know a general public i'm saying to all those founders and entrepreneurs also to yeah. kind of focus on their physical well being as much right. as they are focusing on their financial well being yeah. because at the end of the day you have to look at the long term picture you know i'm 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 not thinking about a uh, short term financial success i'm thinking about success at a level which is life you know i'm thinking about what am i going to do at 80 what am i going to do when i turn 90 you know that's 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 the long picture nobody's talking yeah. about So I want everybody right. to think about that. What are you going to do when you turn eighty? What are you going to yeah. do when you turn ninety? You know, yeah. are you going to be in bed counting how much money you have earned? Yeah. Are you going to live a life that you always wanted? So it's about that. Yeah. yeah. Do do right. do you have an anecdote from any such interaction? Would you like to share something? Uh, Or is it? Yeah, I mean, is it personal? I, <laughs> when I when I talk to people, they always shake their head uh, yeah. in agreement. Uh, but I know that. you know most of the people can't really picture that big picture most people are too occupied with day to day and they get carried in 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 their day to day right to be able yeah. to detach yourself completely yeah. um you know you you need to have a balance of physical mental financial and social well being that's the only way that you actually you know lift yourself up from the current rut and 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 picture bigger things most people will never come out of this rut yeah and that's I unfortunately yeah i I, I mean, it's uh, it's brilliant that uh, you started this because even if you didn't have this funding or whatever, you would be doing this, right? I mean, it it doesn't matter. You would be doing it anyway. So it's so mission driven. I I love it. Uh, we have another question, we, and we were, we were profitable. We were we were running a profitable enterprise, anyways. Ha. So, मतलब so it shows that you know if uh, if there is passion, of course, it won't matter. I think we have a question, and then of course we'll have Shubham over also. He has been. Backstage for too long. I think वो bore हो गया जो सो सो ही ना जाएगा. So okay. Bala is asking, is walking alone enough for fitness? I think Bala is uh, he's a part of the community. He would be around say fifty odd. Uh, yeah, that's okay. that's his age. Yeah. Well, uh, I always tell people to compare fitness with richness. Yeah. So if somebody says or somebody asks me, hey JC, is million dollar enough? for me to be rich i like look i can't tell you that you have to decide that for yourself yeah so if you think a million dollar is good for you to live a good life good for you but you can't suddenly say 100 rupees is good for me 
because even you know that's not true you know so yeah. yes sure walking alone is enough for fitness yeah but you have to ask that question for yourself if somebody tells me hey jc why don't you just walk don't do all this martial arts and mma and all this thing mm-hmm. i'm going to tell them hey million dollars is not enough for me yeah. you getting my <laughs> point yeah right I got it it's it's a very personal thing bala i suppose it's it's what you want uh, out of life and uh, i i think you should go through the book theek hai you know you go through the book buy the book and then let us know what you feel of course you can contact uh, jc on social media is very active on instagram also you can ask him questions be a part of the fitter community that will help uh, a lot and we just might see a different bala perhaps very soon one final question and then we'll have shubham also uh, on the sure. screen uh, uh sneha is asking some people consider body positivity as loving your body as it is how does the book convince them to get fitter oh my god this is this is a good question a lot of body positivity stuff is going around the internet look i have a different definition of body positivity or loving your body i don't call it body positivity i'm saying loving your body okay you love your house does that mean you leave the garbage inside your house do you keep it clean yeah or do you not paint your walls or do you not make sure that the foundation of your house remains strong if all that constitutes as love why would you dump your body right. or dump garbage in your body you know right. i personally treat health and fitness as hygiene just like you brush your teeth take a shower every single day clean your face wash your body you should eat clean and do exercise and that's just going to make you physically and mentally fit inside and outside and this i believe is a much better definition of body positivity or loving your body loving your body basically means taking care of it you know not not giving up on it most of the people out there who think yeah. their body is kind of a dumping ground eat all yeah. the nonsense in the world gain 500 pounds yeah. are they really loving their bodies they are doing a huge disservice to their body because their body is shut down prematurely yeah and in fact yeah in fact uh, a lot of after the pandemic a lot of cases i mean have been happening especially heart attacks and you have also addressed this in the book uh, uh slightly but you know it is there Uh, so guys you need to buy the book and then figure out sara yahan nahi batayenge hum log so uh, also we'll let's let's actually yeah ha kuch keh rahe the aap we'll need a longer session for that at least 4 ah, hours ha ah, hame to bahut lamba session aur uh, jc keeps doing instagram live so you can you know of course uh, uh, watch him there and ask him questions there so let's have shubham shubham is a fitness um, enthusiast and uh, you know he is a part of the fitter community he has been propagating the word to all of us in the book nerds team as well you know to you know get fitter uh, take our fitness more seriously he is a fanboy and <laughs> we thought we should have him to you know add him to the session he's a musician as well let's add him to the stream and uh, yeah this is a first of all out of respect that we have we should say hi to you uh, hi, just a hi. moment just a moment give me a sec yeah go for it go for it please yeah okay so hi rohan hi book nerds and like i said hello jc sir i mean yes there are people who will call you jc but out of the sheer respect that we have for you for what you have given us you know us who want to get fit the entire pe- you know list of people who really feel that they want to do something in the direction you have given us such a brilliant brilliant tool this whole app fitter is such a wholesome experience because not just that it has coaches and it's not just a single app which tells you how to design your diet and you can map your diet and all you know not just map your progress it has amazing number of coaches who are all certified no nonsense also there is this amazing community over there so um anybody has any kind of doubt any confusion i mean the stupidest of all the questions you know we are like we are those middle to back benchers who never raise their hand to ask a question because we are afraid that the teacher will scold us even we are so comfortable to ask those you know those questions that we feel that you know if we put it out there we might just get mocked mocked about it but here it's so responsible it's so nice that people actually take out time you know the coaches there they take out time and they actually answer all of your questions however dumb they might be so thank you so much sir for that 
and i didn't like shubham uh, i'll tell you jc there's one funny incident uh, uh, i think uh, shubham shubham was over to our place and you know he he you, you you need to get those pictures clicked right when you have to you know that is the your most phone. embarrassing that has ever happened to me so i did, <laughs> do we I need to discuss that. it <laughs> i i he was like you know click my pictures and i am going to go naked i was like okay just a moment okay let's let's talk. so i didn't know that there is an app like that so it's a very funny yeah, thing yeah. but you know it tracks your progress jc i really wanted yeah. to ask you and shubham will also comment on this about quantifying nutrition you know this this thing which you it's throughout the book i mean you if you if you read the book you'll realize that that's how we are going to crack this and uh, tell us a little bit more how you you know came across this and then of course shubham will add his experience what he has been doing with the weight weighing scale right so first of all let's let's uh, let's kind of uh... Uh, you know is the ear, ear, ear around quantification a lot of people have this notion that nobody should measure food while they are eating right yeah. Yeah. um and a lot of people kind of get spooked when you tell them hey you have to measure and eat um yeah. when in reality it's not that spooky i mean it's it's just people convincing themselves that that you know quantification is absurd or who measures food but if you think about it they are always doing that like two chapati is actually you know you measuring how many chapatis are there is just a just a unit of measurement two chapatis is actually a unit of measurement a katori dal is actually a unit of measurement you're measuring in terms of katori right when you go to the market you tell bhaiya 1 kilo shakkar dena you don't tell him ki thodi bahut shakkar de do main tumhe thode bahut paise de dunga you ask him for 1 kg sugar and you pay him 32 rupees or 50 rupees i don't know back in the days it was 16 rupees uh, right. <laughs> point is <laughs> quantification is all around us you measure your weight on a weighing machine which tells yeah. you a number right yeah. you want to lose weight also in terms of a number you don't say that i want to lose some weight you say yaar 5 kg wazan kam karna hai 10 kg wazan kam na pant bhi jab pehante hain that is also a number yeah right aankh pe chashma bhi lagta hai wo bhi ek number hai bank balance is also a number so measurements are all around us yeah it's only people who do not understand the basics who say that you should not quantify and measure food yeah. ab gaadi mein petrol bhi measure karke dalte ho tab aapko pata chalta hai ki gaadi kitne kilometer chal rahi hai yeah. and just yeah. like a car your body is also a machine your yeah. body also gives average which we calculate yeah. in terms of your bmr and tdee that's your body's right. average on yeah. an average basis yeah. how much energy my body needs to sustain my daily activities yeah, yeah. so just like you calculate your fuel in uh, milliliters or liters here yeah. we measure the energy that we consume in the form of calories yeah. and every food has a predefined caloric value micros yeah. and micros and the system has been around for 100 years right yeah. it's a at water system yeah. created by at water back in um, you know 19th century and we've been having it for 100 years today every food item you look at the back of the label back of the food yeah. packet there's a mandate label which tells yeah. you how many grams of this food contains how many calories so the system is already there yeah and this is what quantification is you just have to learn how to use the system yeah so shubham would you like to share uh, your you know kind of uh, how, how much time have you been on the app and uh, you know uh, what is the transformation i mean you are still going through it it's not been easy because he has been traveling a lot i suppose but tell us tell us a little bit what's been happening so first of all the way you put this entire thing in such simple words is just amazing nobody could have done it better now my personal experience is when i started even i was a little skeptical ki you can't do it every day is what nud thinks right but right. when you start doing it rohan it is so simple it becomes a part of your life it's okay. as easy as breathing i'm literally yeah. telling you like yeah. wherever you go you can just carry a kitchen weigh scale that's all that is yeah. required and you just measure your calories and everything i've been on the fitter app for i think i think as good as 2 years now Uh, when okay. covid started and i was already aware of this app i i was logged on to this but i was not really using it but when covid started i read jc sir's document there's this document when you enter the app get shredded karke okay. there's this amazing pdf um, okay. in english hindi uh, yeah. and other languages you read it and you know you will be able to design your own diets it tells you so comprehensively and right. so easily that you can do it it's a piece of cake it's yeah. that easily explained so yeah. then i started quantifying and i actually saw results you know i'd been going to the gym i had trainers they had no idea about nutrition but right. as in how i started doing it i realized that it actually 
pays you know it actually shows results so that's what motivated me to actually dive in deep then i got my enrollment with the coach and now i'm actually participating in the transformation challenge which is another brilliant feature about this app um, okay. and the results speak for themselves yeah so <laughs> awesome let's take a question and then we'll go back to what we are talking about i think abin yeah. has got the question abin aswin is asking how do we recover from major injuries and go back to workouts uh jesse would you like to uh, i think he sure. works out so that's why he is asking the question sure uh look injuries can happen to anybody and uh, you'll be surprised to know that a lot of people early you know fall in both bathrooms and 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 get major injuries in fact constitutes to almost uh, upward of 30 40000 injuries every year in the us or bathroom injuries severe injuries right so if you have a notion that you know going to the gym can result in injuries i'm just trying to ease you into understanding that injuries can happen even if you you know step out of your bed um the key here is to learn from the mistakes and then not repeat those mistakes if you have got an injury the first thing is you have to understand how did you get the injury um most injuries related to gyms are probably lower back injuries or if you have let's say a shoulder injury or if you have some sort of a muscle pull it's probably because you did not either do a proper warm up you are lifting above your capacity yeah. or you are not giving your body enough time to rest and recover if you just take care of these basic things you will never get any injury and again you know i've i've had injuries all my life i have uh, osteoarthritis since i was a kid but i can do all sorts of stuff you know i can do back flips and uh, you know all sorts of acrobatics to be uh, even learning now i'm learning the hip hop and everything right so i i do all of this and this is despite the fact that i have osteoarthritis since i was a kid and weight training was the only thing that helped me in recovering from my injuries and it's what keeps my bones healthy and strong um to your preci- precise question um uh, three things are extremely important if you want to recover from any injury motion nutrition and hydration motion improves blood flow blood circulation blood as what channels all the nutrients to your entire body all each and every cell in your body requires nutrition right and blood is basically the carrier so the more you move the more blood circulation will result in more nutrition towards the injured area one thing if you have a shoulder injury that's fine F- forget about the shoulder but you can still work out the rest of the body right but i'm not saying go haywire or uh, you know like uh, use that uh, impaired shoulder i'm just saying do light exercises second thing is nutrition you have to eat adequate amount of protein protein is not just a building block it also aids in recovery it also improves your um, uh, your bone density you know it helps you in multiple ways because the other substrates which is fat and carbohydrates they are not building blocks they are energy blocks you know they they are primarily used for energy in the body but protein is the only thing which is a building block for your body so eat enough amount of protein right so the first part is motion second part is nutrition third part is hydration your body is 70% water even your bones have water in them you know and because of this water so think about it um you ever uh, you know water actually creates a very strong system without water we'd be actually very very weak um our muscles are also water there's a lot of water inside of muscles and that's actually think of uh, think of a muscle as a as a rubber balloon with water filled inside it and like those balloons which we use for uh, you know taking a hot massage or you know the hot pack so that's how yeah. your muscles are they're filled with water yeah. so we really need water for uh, a better functioning of our a body and even in case of injuries if you talk about uh, lower back injury your discs um, you know yeah. discs also have liquid inside them the nucleus yeah. pulpus they have water inside them the uh, you know the the discs they are made up of 70% water so yeah. nutrition motion motion nutrition and hydration these are the key things you have to focus on and of course don't do it yourself make sure you take help from a, a good physiotherapist and start by exercising gradually and don't go on extensive bed rest you know no amount of injury should keep you in extended bed rest okay that's that's a very common myth you know generally we get a small injury and we go on vacation and sabbatical and bed rest for 3 months 4 months that's only going to make your muscles 
weaker and make it more difficult for you to recover from an injury. Yeah. I hope uh, that answered. Yes, sure. Well, sure. I, 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 yes. I have one question that I'd like to ask. Yes, sure, sure. Uh, this is, you have uh, had an IT background, so I'm going to ask a question that pertains to that a little bit, of course, uh, concerning fitter. So um, I have enrolled with a coach and how the system works is that at the end of every week, right, our progress is monitored. Um, yes, the exercises that are given, we, I can go to, uh, we can either go to the gym or we can do home workouts and everything, right? Now, um, there is this one difference when there's a trainer physically present and one difference when we do it through the app. If the, present, if the uh, trainer is physically present in front of us, whatever form we are doing, whether it's right or wrong, you know, he's there to correct us. But this is one thing that maybe, you know, in the fitter app, this cannot be monitored on a regular basis because, of course, there are so many participants, so many uh, students, uh, you know, PTs learning from trainers. So it, it's not physically possible for them to, you know, pay that much attention to each and everyone. And it's not also possible for us to make video every time we're doing it. You know, the number of reps is limited. We obviously go for progressive overloading and all. So being from the IT background and this metaverse thing is now, you know, up and coming. So you think there's this, there is, there's a way where we can inculcate in the near future, I'm not saying like presently, but maybe in the near future, this can also become a part of the metaverse where, you know, the coaches could actually literally see us live in action while we're doing it. Something of that sort, you think that ever seems possible or plausible with this thing? That should be fun. Yeah. So we have live PT uh, where the coaches are actually live and they train you for 45 minutes to an hour, depending on, you know, what PT you're subscribed to. So in a, in a 2D environment, uh, just like how we are talking, you know, in a similar kind of environment, they can guide you um, if you are doing an exercise correct or not. And if you are not enrolled with a PT, even in case of nutrition and fitness, we have pretty a detailed videos if you have seen the new videos the new videos even show you the muscle groups which are working on and from different angles and everything right so that's there i will continue to improve on that we will in future integrate ar and let's let's hope that metaverse kind of becomes a thing which everybody can use right now it's a lot of frenzy right yeah. uh, and i mean you know metaverse it seems like a revamped version of second life but uh, you yes. know where second life is and uh, right. so I'm saying that metaverse is also something which is um, which is a lot talked about, but we should take yeah. it with a pinch of salt. Um, it's like NFTs right now. It's it's up in the air, but nobody's sure about it. A lot, lot of frenzy. But uh, point is, look, metaverse or not, we are definitely uh, trying to create similar kind of environment where people don't feel uh, that there's a lack of some sort of physical um, trainer around them. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, sure. In future, you know, whenever we get an opportunity, we try and invest in that. Um, yeah. Great. I think we have a question from Sweta. Uh, let's take it. Uh, Sweta is asking, uh, what is your opinion about yoga and meditation? I was waiting for this one, actually. So I knew that this will be coming. I, because mindfulness is something that uh, a lot of people are talking about. A lot of people are talking about it. So, you know, it is, I mean... It is in this weird zone, right, JC? It's, of course, there is fitness that you need to go to the gym. You need to make your own workout plan, which you talk about in the book, uh, and make your own nutrition plan. And uh, uh, But where does mindfulness uh, fit into all of this? Right. Um, look, WHO defines health as a state of physical, mental, social, and emotional well-being, right? So if you have the absence of any of those founding fillers, which I had also mentioned, you can't really consider yourself healthy, right? So just like a physical body um, uh, without a physically fit mind cannot be called healthy. In a similar manner, just because you have a fit mind, but you have a large body, which by no means is healthy, you can consider yourself healthy, right? So we have to find a balance. First of all, we need to have extreme clarity about our definition of fitness. When we say we want to get fit, what is it? What is fitness for you? Is it, is it getting six pack abs? Is it living your best life? Or is it something else? You know, because different people will have different definitions of fitness. Some people think yoga is fitness. Well, yoga is a tool. You know, yoga is a tool to achieve fitness. Meditation is a tool to achieve mental well-being. You know? You go to your kitchen. You don't have one knife. 
everybody has different sets of knives you know you have a butter knife you have a butcher's knife you have a short knife you have a big knife yeah. when you are cutting onion you don't use a butcher's knife nor do you use a butter knife you know you use a different knife which is which is which is probably more suited to peel an onion right so all these tools are available for you you have to decide which tool to be used now you mentioned that we have to go to the gym to work out you don't really have to go to the gym the gym is a medium to allow you to work out but if you can work out at home you don't really need gym right i've been working out at home for the last 2 years and i'm maintaining my physical fitness meditation is a tool to achieve mental fitness so could be reading books so could be yeah. watching movies a lot of people feel extremely meditated or calm and composed when they listen to music when they read the yeah. books but sometimes you go to a meditating community meditation community and tell them hey i don't do meditation but i think i'm 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 mentally fit they won't believe you they'll say you can't be mentally fit if you don't do meditation uh-huh. they themselves don't know the real meaning of meditation see meditation yeah. is a tool to help you achieve mental fitness so in a yeah. similar manner yoga and meditation are tools to achieve physical and mental fitness but they are not the only tools so they are tools okay so use these tools in whichever way you can to yeah. say yoga is fitness to say meditation is mental fitness would be wrong they are tools yeah. sounds good i hope i have clarified yeah. without reading it so. yeah pretty clear and swetha could tell us in the comments if uh, she was satisfied okay last segment and last uh, question because uh, i really wanted to address the myths because there are so many and there are so many in the book as well uh, first of all uh, i will ask shubham about one of his myths that was quashed because of the community and then we'll ask jc to kind of you know uh, mention uh, i'll ask jc about a couple of myths at least sure. so shubham any one myth that was quashed when you entered the community or sort of you know uh, went on this journey uh, for a bit so um, rohan not exactly a myth myth per se but you know the perception that we have when we are not deeply involved with this quantified nutrition thing that yeah. when you see somebody doing it you feel ki they are overdoing it you know they they just sort of showing off or something like that i was also of the same I thought, belief i thought that only virat kohli can do it i i really yeah, yeah. similar similar belief we would we would look upon them as aliens and we would think that they're overdoing it and yeah. when i joined the app and i started doing it this yeah. you can call it as a myth and it was like completely quashed because yeah. i have actually applied it to myself and i can actually see results like visible results so yeah. that would be my myth that got busted and i have seen i have seen that in the pictures that i have clicked on yours so i know that there is transformation but jc what were the top what are the top myths i mean say in the last 6 months what is the one myth that annoys you a lot that one myth which really annoys you oh there are a lot of myths you know and some also have okay let's not get into that you know let's 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 talk about some of the common myths <laughs> like yeah yeah calves after 7 o'clock will make you fat uh yeah. or you know there are healthy and unhealthy foods um mm-hmm. you know it's, it's it's probably when you reduce an argument you know there's there's a there's a fallacy it's called yeah. ad absurdum where yeah. you reduce an argument uh, to absurdity uh, yeah. you know then there is no original argument so when i say there are no healthy and unhealthy foods you know the yeah. argument will reduce that oh you cannot eat pizza every single day and if you yeah. eat pizza every single day you will get sick you know that's that's you reducing an argument to absurdity yeah. Yeah. the argument is not whether pizza is healthy or not you know pizza is food yeah you can get unhealthy eating pizza you can also get unhealthy eating dal chawal every single right. day if you eat it in large quantity right yeah. so one of this myth which is which, which very difficult for people to kind of wrap their head around is that that foods are not healthy or unhealthy yeah. you know you talk about a burger let's 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 dissect a burger what exactly in the burger you know a burger is lettuce is lettuce True. unhealthy a burger is cheese is cheese unhealthy yes. a bur- burger has some meat is that unhealthy or if it's a vegetarian burger it has paneer is that unhealthy yeah it has some buns are those unhealthy yeah. is a ketchup unhealthy if individually these small small things are not unhealthy how come somebody combines them together and suddenly it becomes unhealthy mm. the same happens with pizza is maida yeah. unhealthy 
wheat pizza is also there is that unhealthy is cheese unhealthy are toppings unhealthy you know are uh, are those vegetables that come on top of the pizza they are unhealthy but somebody yeah. combines them together and suddenly the food becomes unhealthy and similarly people have this notion that there are superfoods in europe yeah. you can't yeah. really call a food superfood because okay. they've identified superfood as a, as what they refer to as misnomer which means not the appropriate definition or not the yeah. right way to address certain thing right yeah. this can be big huge giant but you can't call this huge or giant right yeah. there there's relative scale to everything you know this can be maybe big but you can't call this giant or large you know giant or large would be something else so in a similar yeah. manner you know a food can be uh, calorie dense a food yeah. can be high in protein a food can yeah. be high in satiety you know yeah. but you can't call a food a super food so similarly you know people need to understand that foods are not really good and bad foods are food it's how you eat them how much you eat them that's what determines if they are really good for you or not yeah. so uh the basic concept around um this thing needs to be done and dusted with and people need to understand key things about food that every food is high in uh, either high or low in density high or low in uh, protein um you know which means and higher low in satiety right satiety is basically so basically you have a hormone called leptin right which tells your brain that you know i need to eat food it's a hunger hormone in yeah. case of foods which have poor satiety you know it it pushes your leptin signals uh, further you know which means it tells your brain again and again because there's a hedonic cycle the reward cycle so it's okay. it's the same thing when you eat boiled potatoes Yeah. you can't eat boiled potatoes a lot or you can't eat a lot of boiled eggs but suddenly uh, you make uh, you know potato chips and you'd be able to eat a lot of potato chips you know why because potato chips are made in a way where uh, you know the they use the right kind of spices the right kind of condiments and they they cook it in a way that you suddenly have this urge to keep eating them right that's that's the trick it's the same boiled potatoes but when they are boiled potatoes you're not going to eat them but when they are cooked well you're going to eat them yeah. and this is this is applicable to everything uh, you yeah. eat bad food you suddenly have like this poor appetite you're like yeah food is not good enough i'm not going to eat mm-hmm. and suddenly the food is tasty you end yeah. up eating it more and that's the real trick so basically the idea is that you know no food is good and bad you just have to understand that foods are high in satiety and low in satiety so for you to able to rightfully eat the amount of food you just have to pick high satiety food over low satiety food okay so pizza and burger is not really bad but it is very poor in satiety which okay. means that you will likely overeat pizza you will likely yeah. overeat burger you won't restrict yourself to one slice you'll end up eating all six uh, yeah so problem is not pizza problem is the six slices it's the quantity it's so the quantity that, yes guys be careful about that quantity and uh, of course read the book uh, that is very important because in in the first half of the book you'll have to be patient okay because there is a lot of science you need to understand it to really get into the whole ecosystem that uh, jc and the entire the entire fitter community has kind of you know uh, built and uh, if you kind of you know skip through the first half it will be very tough for you to understand the second half it will be tough to kind of you know understand what's happening here so also a final question about the book and i know shubham has got 20 questions for you more but there is not enough time so but i i really wanted to know about the inception of inception of the book because what was the kind of discussion with rupa that was happening because i'm sure that there must be many concepts that were discussed how should one kind of you know present it because the community is already there right uh, so look i had no plans of writing a book i had already written get shredded which was a free book available even yeah. now it's free and most of the people actually end up reading it um yeah. the idea was never to launch a book but then i kept getting requests from people ki sir you should launch some you know book with more detailed uh, information like get shredded and get shredded is a little complex maybe simplified even further um and uh, uh, a stroke of luck as one might call it you know devankar reached out to me in 2018 and he said jc uh, you know let's let's write a book so yeah. I, i was pretty ecstatic like i was like 
as I, I, I just written get shredded and you know now i'll be writing a book on fitness which was crazy so i openly said yes um, and then it was about writing the book right it took almost good 2 years to kind of refine and the banker was like we have to make it simpler we have to make it simpler we have to make it simpler and uh, now that it's out there we realize that okay uh, it's simple enough but uh, you know simple as in you, you want you're saying that you wanted to cut they wanted you to cut down the signs of it or how do we make it simpler well i wanted to add a lot more in it in terms of hormones in terms of you know how metabolism actually happens inside the yeah. body but then i realized that look this is uh you know because we are talking to an audience which might not be interested in learning all those things right so Possibly. we we yeah. to let go of some of the chapters and we we really uh added a lot of examples uh like yeah. in the beginning when we were talking about those personal transformation stories i think that was a really great last minute addition and yeah. uh, it it kind of makes people first of all believe that this is possible and then i think it also adds a lot of relatability something which was not there in get shredded document so it's a it's it's a improvement over get shredded in many many ways and it has definitely simplified um you know fitness for a lot of people awesome awesome uh, i i think we are slightly over time but i think i have to give one final question to shubham because he'll kill me otherwise uh, because this session has happened because of him shubham <clears throat> uh, would you like to share something or have a question for jc because this is i mean it's your session um, sir <laughs> okay <laughs> I do have two questions. I don't know how I'm going to fit them in this timeline. Um, one small curiosity that I've always had: you started with squats, right? The entity first was squats. How did it reach to the name fitter? Was it was it like I'm also an entrepreneur, so I understand there's a thinking thought process behind it. Does it have an acronym to it, or how did it come to be? If you could just <laughs> uh, so it does not have any acronym. Um, okay. Uh, the the idea mm-hmm. and, and squats is actually the parent company right so even right. now the company's name is squats fitness private limited uh, i really like the name squats because it was an acronym and it stood for systematic quantitative unified aesthetic transformation system back in the days right, right. and it right. also was name of a very famous exercise uh, squats right yeah. and there like the problem because when we told people hey we have squats most of the people would exclaim oh like in the squats squats and then wow. i'd have to decipher the entire name right and right. and the most happened when people started pronouncing squats as scoots or squeaks <laughs> that back to here you know and yeah. and once i heard this journalist saying squeaks 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 like throughout <laughs> the country, kept calling it squeaks i was like that's it you know that's it <laughs> i love to pick something which is extremely simple where i don't have to go about explaining people what we do you know today i say you know, i'm founder of fitter the other person already makes a guess oh so you're into fitness i'm like yeah sure right it's <laughs> as simple as it is yeah, yeah. and don't you want to do want to the second question very quickly do you want to i do questions? actually i do actually so this is okay yeah so quickly um, i think in one of the cities uh, squats is tying up with the, you know one of the uh, another company which provides access for the gym you don't have to pay annual membership right at the beginning but every monthly you can do that am i am i correct here no like no probably noida okay. or delhi or somewhere we don't have any Achha. such types acha okay okay we but don't have any, such types. any awesome. uh, you know future prospects on that like if because it will become very easy for you know the people who are actually going for the fitter app for them to get the accessibility to the gym it might become more convenient because some people don't want to pay the entire month's membership and they would like to go for you know three months or they want to pay every monthly so uh, just a random thought it just occurred to me so if right so we mm-hmm. had invested in a company called fitato um, in in right. 2020 right before the pandemic and the idea was that you know a gym pass a kind of a model but because of the pandemic the company shut down and then we dropped the idea we realized that okay. you know the idea is not pandemic proof and the kind of world we are living in you know everybody True. has to ensure that businesses are pandemic proof so then we drop the idea and i think uh, the future is anyways on premise or at home or you know society based gyms like of course most of the societies these days if you are buying a house they offer gymnasiums and pools and and better societies they offer better gyms better gymnasiums better pools right so in future i think that trend will continue to pick up and as i keep telling that uh, you know gyms and themselves are not a great business model 
and i i can feel the pain of all the gym owners uh, yeah. but after the pandemic i really think that somebody would dare to open a chain like gold gym um or or any other popular gyms because the pandemic has changed that you know pandemic has completely changed that absolutely while i is like this has been a great session i will definitely buy the book you you should also take the this thing fit a subscription that will help you even more uh, no, no, I don't no. don't need subscription just read the book read and join the community that's enough for you guys to get fit yeah yeah um, you know subscriptions are yeah. only for people if they want to take it from one level to another but for ah, you to get fit you don't really need any kind of subscription yeah right right awesome desi thank you so much this is a one of a kind first session for all for the book nerds community and it has been awesome of course i know shubham has enjoyed it because he was already on a trip uh, i'm flipping in my mind right now i am not showing it on my face yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you have done a great job but uh, jc thank you so much you have been so kind and this book uh, guys you can buy it off amazon and uh, you know let jc know on instagram and he's everywhere you know just anywhere on social media just let him know what you felt about it because we just might get a sequel you never know so you know a uh, request for a sequel also and let uh, you know share your journey as well you know how you felt about the book uh, how has it transformed you thank you so much jc for doing this uh, we have taken too much time of yours so, uh, sorry about that but no, uh, thank you for doing this no i enjoyed this so much, so much once again and thanks a lot shubham uh, you know don't stop pestering these guys you no know, next time when we are doing this session, i hope Uh, everybody kind of understands quantified nutrition and gets right yes. into it. Yes, okay. yes, thank you absolutely. so much. Thank you thank so you much. So. Thank you so much. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye. 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 Bye.